Conceptual piece all figured out tonight. <laughs> we thought it'd be good if we could somehow get something going where it'd be a fist fight break out here tonight, and we're just trying to pick out the guy we want okay, you to whip up minute. on. Let's now, find the guy. Now, I've seen three that I don't like so far. Where, where's your stuff? You know my stuff. That's a sea otter. Yeah, that's incredible. That's a sea otter with, with a gift in her hand. Looks like a cat to me. Yeah, it could be a cat. Look at his stuff under here. See how soft and fuzzy that is? Yeah, and it's got whiskers. Yeah. It's got a little whiskers there. Yeah, it could be a cat, yeah. but it's really not to see it. That's a man shoveling, shoveling fire right there. I know, but anyway, I just, I, I mean, I really wouldn't get it. But what I want to tell you about is I'm going down to my daddy's Monday, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut a big, I'm gonna cut this big tree down. It's just falling across a creek. I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna drag it out with a tractor, and drag it home, and I'm gonna make a picture sculpture out of it. And it's gonna be cold. <laughs> Gonna be called Blind Bear holding a crooked stick. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. The tree's still alive, but what's happened is, is that the, the, the creek has washed uh, washed out its roots. See, it's washed underneath it, and the, and the tree's now kind of bent and fallen over the creek. Now, I've never walked upon a bear in the woods, but I've seen pictures of bears and things, so. You know, I just kind of felt like that, the, that that log was it, that the bear was waiting in there for me. So I'll just dig him out. So there was a big buzzard roost back here. We used to slip down here when we were kids and, and shoot at the buzzards with 22s. We never did hit any. Well, once or twice, maybe we did. That's going to be the finest tree. Just absolutely perfect. Now, I'll tell you what I think maybe we should do is we should kind of start cutting up here. Yeah, and get this stuff. And get this stuff cut down to where we'll, we'll get it cut to about if here. If you get this good, you're going to cut out your way and we'll drag it out with the tractor, then you decide okay. how you're going to work your, kind of how you're going to work your big part of it. And you do the cutting and we'll do the dragging. Because we ain't nothing but loggers. <laughs> I said, Craig and Jeff was with me last year, and Alex McClendon was loading some logs over there with a horse. And I stopped and let them watch him. I just, I told him, I said, y'all get a good look at that. You'll never see it again. And I just thought that, uh, that'd be, he'd never see that in a lifetime. Oh, right. Right, because it's loading some horses. It's just the thing of the past.
plan on walking down there and just getting on top of it and cutting it. But see, my blade won't go all the way through it. So you I, don't have to get in the water. There's no two ways That means I'm going to have to get in the bottom somehow. Let me just go down there and look at it. See what it... There's a big moccasin down there, though. You're going to have to get him out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might get him out of the way with flags. You're going to bust your ass on that sliding when it's what you're going to do. Chainsaw? No. God, how'd you like to be stuck out here all day listening to them damn locusts? Oh, boy, this thing is enormous on this end. It's just enormous. Well, I'll take this thing right here and give it to, to Bob Wade. Down there where you cut? Yeah. All right. uh, we, we're going to drag it out and look at it. Well, i got to find that other chain first. I might have to go back up there to my truck to get it. Wait, here's a big piece. Yeah, I'm glad I'm a painter. Well, I'm very sad. Yeah, I can leave it. Oh, I can get it. I can get it. Well, here's another little one here. I'm going to take those. Yeah. 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 All right, go ahead. Take it out. make a hog trough out of it. I don't think it's going to make a blind bear, unless I call it blind bear with a big rotten hole down his back. Too bad. Well, screw it. Let's take it out and see what it looks like. I've been drinking muddy water out of a hollow log. Well, in the design, you couldn't hold that and use it. Well, not for this piece I want to make now. I couldn't yeah. for the bear. I could do it for something else. I could just wait and save it and, and uh, have to kind of re, uh, reorient yeah. my thinking on yeah. it. But it's but for the piece that I want to make now, it's not any good. Yeah. I mean, it needed to be solid. Yeah. God, is it such a beautiful shape, though. You don't think Joanne's going to have a planter box made out of it <laughs> if we leave it, do you? I'm just going to have to go look for another log, that's all. You don't know there's another big old log about three foot curved across the creek anywhere. <laughs> what about them logs that's back down the way I saw that were dead, and those trees that were dead. There's a yellow one right over there, but it's only about that big round. Yeah. But it's about 50 foot high. Yeah, well, I got a, I, I, is it dead? How come you think Cleaver left this tree here? I imagine it's because it's hard to get two back in this ticket because the only reason I can count for it anyway. Well, it's got a good shape. I, I, I kind of hate to cut it, to tell you the truth, but it's, the other one was in the ditch and it would be all right. But Well, I think what I'll do is I'll cut it off. I'll cut that limb off, and then I'll cut it again right up there. And just take it in one length? And then just take the whole big thing in one, one length. <laughs> That's 
What would you give for a big old cold Dr. Pepper right now? How about a cold six pack of beer? All right. Hmm. Spare is not going to be as tall as I thought it was. I don't think it's going to leave it about uh, eight feet. The only art book we had in our house was an Audubon book. We had a, a, a book of Audubon's, you know, uh, rabbits and uh, moose and uh, deer and things like that. And uh, that was art. But uh, real artists, uh, I guess everybody thought of artists as a nut kind of. You know, you're either a queer or you're a, you know, well, that's or something. Like you started using your hands and being able to make something that you conceived of, whether it was a fence post or a table for a barn or something. So that when you got, when your head got to the point where you were, thinking about so-called art, you really had an ability to go out there and just know how to use uh, tools. Right. Like me and my uh, older brother and my daddy, uh, uh, with a cross-cut saw, sawed all of the uh, the timbers down that made all of the paneling that went in uh, went in our den. It was all cedar. Yeah. And, we, and we built that house. I, mean, I just kind of grew up building and making things, you know, and, and using logs, like making a pole barn out of logs. But at the time, Jesus, God, I hated it. Oh man, in well, August you're digging. It sure, was work. sure, it was work. It wasn't art. It was work. And now I do the same thing, and I call it art. And so it, I don't really consider it work. Well, that counts just like your stove, you know, I mean, the more velocity that you have going up the chimney, you know, the, the harder it fires. It just makes the flames go through there faster. So it's just a matter of it didn't get hot enough, and I guess it just comes from old age in the kiln. And the kiln's got that kind of personality thing that you can't ever really say one thing or the other is the matter with it. It's just, uh, see, the body is mature, but it's uh, the inside the glaze isn't melted and stuff like that. It just needs to go probably like 200 degrees higher. 
Oh, I see. It just got to be like an economical thing. You know, it takes too long to get it hot. Yeah. Start firing 24 hours or something, you start using too much gas to make it work tonight. So when are you going to put that chimney on? I don't know, I figured a week. That's going that's nice. I love that speckled stuff in there. Yeah, hey, speckled stuff comes in early in the firing. It's just iron in the clay. Looks like a bird egg. Why don't we just go ahead and put one more in and then let's go eat? You know, there's a lot of talk now about uh, so-called Texas look or Texas art, and I'm kind of scared of any kind of look. You know, whether it's the Texas look or the, the California look. I think part of the drawback to, uh, to California art is the fact that you know it's California art. Don't you think all that comes about from like, or say like a New York look would come like, like there would be like one genius would kind of come about, and then there would be like, one genius would have a following, say like Rauschenberg would come along, and there he'd be, and then there'd be people that would be doing his kind of art, and then, you know, maybe somebody like Poons would come along, and there'd be a bunch of people following him. So all of a sudden you get, I mean, it's still a personality thing, but it just so happens that all those guys live in New York. And I guess that, uh, in a way, the artists in Dallas are still isolated. So yeah, I mean, speak. nobody's been really put on a pulpit yet. I mean, you know, no, nobody, there's not a genius yet. I just don't want to, I don't want people to look at my art and say, oh, he's from Texas. They can look at me and say that, or they can hear me talk and say that. That's okay. I mean, I am from Texas. But I don't necessarily want my art to be that closely identified with the Texas look to the, to the point that it gets categorized, and then it simply doesn't have meaning anywhere else except, except in the region. Today what I'm going to talk about is, uh, is where images come from, uh, where you get them in the first place. Uh, would somebody mind coming up here and pushing these buttons when I say push it? All of these pieces are made out of wood. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a wood carver, if I if somehow have forgot to tell you that. Push a button. This piece is called Shannon's Secret. It's a, Shannon is my daughter. She's at, at the age where she loves secrets. So this was like a magic box to keep her secrets in, which are probably some of the most important things in the world. Push a button. This is called I Saw a Man with Bats in His Hands and Three Birds Stuck in His Head. At this point, I I'd, I'd kind of had decided that it was OK to make something that was uh, nuts, so to speak. It's OK to do it because it's, it's sculpture. See, it's just art. It's not real. So it won't really hit you on the head or anything.
Well, now you finished it, and it sits here in the San Antonio Woody Museum. And there are a bunch of people looking at it. Does it look the same to you as it did when you first created it? Well, I don't know. It'd be awful hard to answer that objectively. You know, I mean, I, I have a. It's uh, it's done. You know, it's through. It's finished, and it's and it's gone. And uh, it's like in my mind, I, I think I've kind of already quit dealing with it. You know, I just can't do that forever. So at some point, I quit thinking about it, and, and that's the way I feel about it. You know, it's gone. Patricia, we're so glad oh, to darling. see you tonight. What the least you can her. do is say hello. I think she should powder our nose with her Patricia. little Patricia. crochet. <laughs> so. The least she can do is talk to us. I wonder who did her permanent. I don't know, I think her hair is covered. I think we have some very strong arms in Texas, don't you? Well, very strong. What's happening? Are you lost in this maze? <laughs> they just get real serious. They're kind of like Bonnie and Clyde, you know, they're really into pictures. That's an automatic gun. Yeah, that's, that's a machine gun. Funny. It's, it's good. So I just blew, I blew that up a couple of years ago and then came back and put that color on there. We uh, stop and visit those guys every time we go through there because they're just so outrageous, you know, they're just so nuts. That's usually they get that, they sort of fall out of the canvas and, uh, well that's not, that's not about you. What, what are you going to do next? Uh, I'm working on a, what's called a, the Great American Rodeo Exhibit. Uh, that's oh, gonna there's, there's, oh, she's, oh, she's going to do it. She's going to do go it. Right oh, through. right through. Go on. Another step. Right. Another step. I am wondering oh. when somebody was going to do that. That's all right. You know? Well, she's participating. She feels when, If she participates hard enough and pulls on the deal, it'll all she's come right, down on top yeah, of her. Yeah, I don't know why they're squashed. so amazed about the material and everything. It's on uh, everybody's back. It's in everybody's <laughs> home, you know? <laughs> I think it needs a little glitter on it. I mean, yeah. thing, I think this is a very plain period in your life. You're, you're yes, more I, I was exotic still, these days. I was still married then. It was kind of depressed. I was holding back, you know. I'm talking well, don't you think the abstract painter... You feel sorry for yourself. Syndrome. If you split with your woman, you got to feel sorry for yourself. You know, it's like when you really feel sorry for yourself, you're going to go put on some sad music. You're going to go, you like it to, it, it's nice if it rains and gets sort of drippy and drizzly and you have some sad music on. If you've got a lot of bills on the table that you've got to pay for, the, the worse the better. The sorrier you can feel, the easier it is to get over a split up between lovers. Pretty soon, people get tired of hearing agony and agony and agony and agony and agony and agony and agony. And it gets, it gets to a point where it becomes agony to listen to it. I think like when I was living in West Texas, the weather was so uh, dynamic that it sort of made people weird. The weather's abrasive. In West Texas, it's kind of abrasive. And, and you have to sort of really hold your own or the weather will wipe you out. And it's a good reason to, to maybe get abrasive with your art, I don't know. Whereas maybe in some parts of Texas where it's real consistent year round and real mellow, uh, like here in Houston, it seems like a lot of the painters do a real consistent kind of mellow, even pretty kind of paintings. And, the further west you get, the work seems to be, to me, a little more abrasive. A lot of people uh, think of this kind of material as being cheap and gaudy and ugly, but it's so much a strong part of our society that, to me, it's kind of interesting, particularly when you, when you put it all together and isolate it, it has a sort of a bittersweet feeling to it. I got fascinated with the Oh, with, with tombs I saw where they had the little cameo pictures of the people that were buried in the grave, like the cowboy in various facets of his life, getting decked by another cowboy and sitting with his uh, sweetheart. <laughs> and the boots and the cowboy skeleton are sort of Hollywood, kind of glitter and gaudy. The whole thing's like a grand statement of gaudiness. These are the ones, I guess, that people are objecting to. 
I really can't see how that anybody would, would have thought of these as being pornographic, though, because they're not. I don't know. It seems like if something's really that funny, I can't imagine somebody getting up in arms about it or offended, because if it's funny, it's funny. They could, they could find some more hardcore material in their local 7-Eleven. <laughs> it's all the same. Hell, you can even find this in Lubbock or Amarillo. You know, it's just the same everywhere. It's just all of the American cities are going to be just prototypes of each other. They're all, they're all going to look the same. It's very disturbing in a way to me. You're going to have L.A. from sea to shining sea. That's right. Astro Pimple. Astro Hall, Astro Dome, Astro World. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. No, this one, that one, and then that one. This is the latest. This is the latest one. You can see why conceptual art, uh, considering the number of galleries, etc., 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 and the, the few number of artists that one found in New York City that you'd have a great number of conceptual artists. Conceptual art is basically bullshit. It's a lot easier for me to function out of Texas than it would be in New York, but some people advocate that it, you know, it's good to go somewhere where it's hard to function because it'll make, make you work it better or you have to hustle more or whatever. But, uh, we have to hustle enough down here because we don't, we don't really have that much support. The reality is, is it's a bunch of people working in Texas that are serious and they care about what they're doing. George Green, James Searles, Bob Wade, a lot of people. James Hill, they're, they're doing things that they feel serious about. And nobody has ever paid any fucking attention to them. Ever, ever, ever. Economically, it's much easier. In the last six years, they built eight major new museum spaces, and they haven't filled them. And so there's that sort of the support by challenge. Yeah, the, support the, support the, uh, the reason I came to Texas was that I thought that the artists in Texas were more, were more intelligent than the average number of artists that you would normally find elsewhere. <laughs> I've split up with another girl recently that I liked very, very much. much. And the, the reason, reason I split up with her was because she seriously listened to all the bullshit I've been, I've been giving her for the last, last couple of years. It's like liberal bullshit. You, if you follow what I mean, it's like, um, you, you should do what your heart tells you. To do what you feel like doing. Do what your heart tells you. 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 If you, you meet somebody, somebody and you like her, you meet somebody do what you and like her, you. do what you like her. I have for the life of me, I cannot figure out, cannot figure the man and woman relationship. The man and woman relationship. I still don't know. I still Maybe don't I'll know. never know. Maybe that'll I'll be, never know. That'll be okay. That'll, that'll be, be okay. That'll be okay. okay. That'll be the okay. more mystified you the are, more mystified you are, the better it is. Better it is. Oh, Only your mother could could take your life and put it together in such a nice stencil. Look at out. all those nice cuts. See, vacations and everything here is cut yeah. out, put down Mount Vernon, Colorado Springs, New Mexico, whereas Missouri, Colorado. The thing about it that was interesting, I didn't know anything about uh, the blacks, the Chicanos, because we were very carefully kind of segregated from them until we uh, we went to my mother's uh, hometown in Roswell, New Mexico. And uh, uh, the whole neighborhood was sort of an interracial neighborhood. And uh, I, I really enjoyed some of the Chicanos, some of the Mexicans I met, because uh, they offered uh, a whole way of life I never thought about before. And I loved it. Uh, I ran around with, uh, with, with Raymond and several other people. I can't remember the name. And, and when my mother found out I was running around with, uh, with, the, with the Mexican kids, uh, she freaked out. And, just, uh, and that's my 51 Buick. See, I nosed and decked it to put it in a subtle grill. I made up the hubcaps. It was a Buick Special. 
Oh, I can't do it special. But that was a fine car. These are the guys from your high school? Yeah, this Charles is the, this is the group that I ran around with the whole the whole time in high school. What y'all do when you went to Mexico? Everything we could. <laughs> because there was no restriction. There was no limit on drinking and uh, there was no limit on, on dealing with women or anything you wanted to. And uh, part of the problem was, was like growing up in the 50s in, uh, in West Texas, nobody would do anything. They were trying to be too middle class. And uh, we'd go down to Mexico to get exposure to the way life was. I am We can leave man. West Texas and be become a man. You know, yeah. we got to go to the south border to prove our manhood. That's yeah. what this is all about, is that. There's an early sketch. Isn't that grim? It's pretty bad. My folks never said anything about it, but I know that they didn't like it too much because it's, uh, uh, you know, in that part of the country, if you uh, if you studied art, you were kind of a faggo or a, a wimp or queer. They, they, you were called a queer. But they never called me queer because I was their son, you know. But uh, it was kind of a struggle the whole time, and um, I spent about five or six years trying to convert my family and the people back in uh, West Texas that uh, art isn't representation. Art has a lot to do with idea. And, uh, yeah, it did have a lot to do with idea as long as it conformed to their idea, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I gave up on that later on and just realized that uh, you're not going to change somebody's idea. You can just present stuff, and maybe if you're lucky, they'll change. I don't know. I would like to demonstrate that I can be a virtuoso singer. When the brand is done, when the brand is done, fun, when it's time for fun, dancing around the polka, for miles around, folks for miles around, town, come to town, join in the roundup polka, join in the roundup polka, people by the score, dance with three or four. Hey man, how you doing? Well, just I'm just trying to get it together to uh, to get on the road. I'll probably be gone about a week, something like that. Got some things down in San Antonio I got to pick up, and uh, we're gonna go down to Austin and see those people. Oh, I think I'll probably put them in uh, two shows. Uh, there's one in Fort Worth coming up, and then I hope to take a lot of this stuff up to uh, to New York. There's a thing at uh, 112 Green Street. Yeah, I'm just gonna put up a whole wall of stuff. So uh, that's that's what we'll do. We'll be gone about four or five days. I'll give you a call. Okay, bye. It's Robert Reddy, what do you think? James, look at that picture that I found. That's the one that Parnell and them gave me that original. Oh, yeah. We'll see him probably. Oh, it's uh, easy to be signed, too. I never noticed that. Yeah, it's a nice one. Texas tornado right, coming down. Right, let's go, let's go. Texas tornado. The last review, which came out in Art in America, referred to my work as being consistently macho kitsch. This, this critic named Clement Greenberg, who's, who's like always been touted as the great elitist, formless critic of New York City, in 1939 wrote an article about kitsch, tawdry, mass-produced, touristy type of crappy items, right? He was simply laying out philosophical points about the concept of kitsch. And that's basically then what I do in terms of all of this stuff that's down here. It's just good material to talk about. And that's all we do. We're just talking about it. James, we're going to head on down here to uh, Jernigan's taxidermy. Remember Byron Jernigan? You've been there before. Sure. See those jackalopes? Byron will stuff you, put, put together a jackalope head for you, or maybe an armadillo. Avelina. I'm gonna ask him if he can put together a stuffed mule. Let's see, watch that truck turn. You, you, th th this is two way right here. You better hop. Just go it's on. Two way bullshit. It turns yes. a two way right there. Right there, it, start, right, there, right there it starts. Right there, right there it starts two way. He's getting it all fixed up now. Let's get him this. 
got fenced off. A little tableau. What do you say, Byron Jernigan? Hello, Byron. How you doing? All right. Good to see you. What do you mean, how did you say? Oh, just, uh, we're going across the state right now. Trying to pick up some things, do some more shows. I'm going to take some up to New York City. What do you think they'd like to see up there? They've got a lot of stuff. I don't know if they've seen stuffed raccoons ass. <laughs> How outrageous would it be to, to do a mule? Could, a mule could that be, be done? Anything can be done. They have a donkey down there in San Antonio. Oh, there's, yeah, donkeys around. I've never heard of a mule being mounted. I think that'd be good. You got a use for it. How much would it cost to go through that whole thing? You know, to... To mount a mule? Probably run you around 1800 2000 have you got access to many armadillos right now? I mean, just to where you could to where you could mount them? Can you get hold of them pretty easy? This time of year, you can't get them at all. Really? They're just... Well, you can't find them. What time of year can you get them? Well, if you're looking for them, you can't get them at all. If you're not looking for them, you can get them in the fall. Oh, let's see. Oh, you got me. Here they are back here. Here's a small one. Oh, that's nice. Looks a little bigger one. Are these just what shot with a 22 or something? Oh, 22 or shotgun. That's shotgun there. See, it makes much of a hole. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Here's a bigger one. I got two more back there. One, two, three, four, five. Five in here. Yeah. That one's a big one too, isn't it? Yeah, there's one real big one there. Five, and then you got one outside that'd be six. Six, right. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, those are real nice. I like your little one a lot. Here's a skin for a jackalope. A couple of them. Two jackalope skins. Right. Ready to go. Okay. Anything else? Got you some big old fish. I like those. Uh, the armadillos, I think, are the best. Okay. Would you tell me about that buffalo? Like it got hit by a car or something? Uh, got out on the highway tonight. Girl in a Pontiac hit it. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a deal on that. I need that real bad. What would it cost me? Oh, I don't know what's it worth. You would have to pay about thirty-five for a big longhorn deal yeah. with a set of horns and a big skull, big one. Oh, worth twenty-five? Yeah. You don't run across a buffalo skull every day. No, I think it's nice. And then all too soon, the difference between satire and irony and humor in the Texan's mind is very fine. He'll say one of the most bizarre, gross statements in the world with that real straight face like Byron Jernigan, and you don't know whether that guy is really serious and like really kind of obsessed about those fucked up armadillos laying in that uh, freezer. That coyote, that's or whether the guy really kind of is laughing on the inside about it. I mean, you know, when he's selling deer heads and armadillos to the Japanese. Now, that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. And I know that he knows that that's funny. But he doesn't just sit there and laugh all day about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, isn't it? What are you doing there, man? Starting that curl in there. This machine's about 70 years old. They quit making the electric ones in, in the 40s somewhere. Well, then that rolled, that rolled uh, brim has been around a long time too, hasn't it? The rolled brim. Is that what, what's called what's, uh, what's called a high roller if it's rolled? Mm -hmm. when, <laughs> when I got out of the service, Dad wanted me to come back in the hat business with him. And instead of coming in the hat business, I went and 
wanted to go in the insurance business. He said, you're nothing but a damn high roller. You want to go drink coffee with all these women? I know you. So for my birthday, he made a hat, a traditional gambler-style hat, like this, except it was in a, a light gray, and just wrote in the front of it, instead of my name or anything, just wrote in the front of it, high roller, as a joke. I got to where I was selling more hats than I was insurance and came back to hat business. <laughs> Okay, and it bitch, we tattooed some bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most beautiful letter in the world. What kind of a hat did you make that guy? We made him a black beaver derby with a tool leather and a silver and turquoise hat band on it that would just knock you off your feet. You could not believe it. He, did he really like it? Did you get any more correspondence from oh, him? Oh, God, yes. What do you think? Does I it look pretty good? Fine. Thing about it, light as a feather, anyway. Those are good. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. When we dance together. My world's in disguise It's a fairyland tale That's come true And when you look at me With those stars in your eyes I could waltz across Texas with you Waltz across Texas with you in my arms Waltz across Texas with you Like a storybook ending I'm lost in your charm And I could waltz across Texas I'd say maybe 10 years ago, this cross-current thing started happening from Los Angeles to New York and Texas is caught in the middle. The people in Texas probably know more about New York and Los Angeles art than either L.A. knows about New York or New York knows about L.A. In other words, we'll take a lesson from both sides and then go and do really what we're going to do anyway. There's the entrance right there. Everybody's ready. Are you ready? <laughs> Mirror's right over here. James, Mirror's two tickets, man. Get us some tickets. We'll get us a couple of cold ones. I told you. Well, just get them. No, I wouldn't eat any rattlesnake meat on a bed. <laughs> Got two booths. One of them is uh, mounted rattlesnakes, and here's fresh rattlesnake. James, come pay this guy for some rattles, fresh rattlesnake. You gonna give us some of that? How does it come? <laughs> or you have a little 25 cents worth would be three or four little ones. Well, we got a man that rounds them up with Vincent Savage. Got about 3,000 in the pen right now for us. 3,000? So you just take them out whenever you need them? We need them, yeah. We I go need... in there. We go, we go in there and pick them out as we go along. Mm -hmm. we'll just go along and pick them out. Do a lot of people pick out it? the biggest ones we want. Do a lot of people eat it? Yeah, a lot of people. Where it's, getting, it's getting to be something that people really want to eat. Rather snakes they do want to eat it? Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of people are doing this for, for mostly for health now. Why is that? It's supposed to be something to cure cancer and stuff. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He's got 3,000. Where can I get about 50 rattlesnakes? Just display? From him? Dead ones? I just need, you know, uh, I don't want to what do cook you want? them. I need to, to hang them on, a, on, on like a, a fence or kind of a rod. Yes, sir, I can tell you about these rattlesnakes. Most of them came, did you fix them? These came from South Texas, most of them off the King Ranch. And Star County, Duval County, Freer, Texas. We make the hunts every year and we buy these snakes and I also catch them myself at night. We go down and drive the country roads and catch them at night. 
and I claim to be the best snake mounter in the United States, in the world, pardon me. Woo! All right. <laughs> Coconut and drink it all up with the lime in the coconut. <laughs> Arabs wanted to buy the Alamo. It was a sheik or somebody who wanted to just move the whole thing over there for his son. But the daughters of the Texas Republic couldn't see fit to do it, so they fell down in Brackettville, Texas, where the Alamo village is located. That's the duplicate of the Alamo. And where they shot the Alamo with John, John Wayne. Wayne. They, they said they would sell him that one. He wouldn't go for it. He wanted the real thing. What? 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 What is this shit? He... Barabaka! Barabaka! Barabaka, hombre! Under hombre! Barabaka! Besame! Besame! Barabaka! Barabaka! Put the lime in the cooking. Mel Casas, this is Bob Wade. How are you doing, man? Are you up yet? I got James King with me. We uh, we had to come down to San Antonio to uh, get some material, man. But I wanted to get together with you. Why don't we see you around three or so? Okay, man. Good. Later. Bye. There's a lot of hippies on the road. Especially Oaxaca. Oaxaca has. See how much they ignored are. that. Driving Cadillac. No, they don't have to. They got credit They've cards. Got they can a... do anything. <laughs> <laughs> All leather backpacks. This one had a kind of a billboard thing for me, but it also had that whole, uh, uh, you know, South Texas. Idea. Well, then the sense they take off on the idea of an homage to um, Cesar Chavez. Mm -hmm. And uh, in working with this particular painting, I was involved very much with the idea of uh, not only with the image of Chavez, but also the amount of sacrifice from the man for an idea or an ideal. Strangely enough, the ideal seems to be somewhat almost per se in a culture in America in which we're trying to get away from being middle class. He's trying to make the Mexican American, in quotes, mm -hmm. uh, middle class. Yeah. In a culture where it's more profitable to be very rich or very poor and not middle class, he's trying to get him to the middle class stage. Mm -hmm. But in a sense, since the, since the agrarian Mexican worker or Chicano worker or Mexican American worker has not been there, he feels if you deny him that, that stage of development that he's been denied. So he has, I guess, has to has go, to to go that, through, through that stage. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I remember this one from a few years back. That has a more specific kind of uh, Texas yeah, it kind is. of idea. <clears throat> in a sense, uh, it doesn't seem to be as, as scary as some of, uh, of these later pieces. Well, it's, it's scary in a different way. It's, it's, it's scary in what it implies, yeah. and that is that if you wanted recognition, especially in Texas, you have to paint the kind of paintings that the Texas audience wants. If you don't work within this given criteria, you cannot function, but the criteria they're giving, they're giving you is all oh, that is it's all per se. Texas tends to have an inferiority complex. Uh, it has a lot of wealth, but it always looks to the east for enlightenment. Maybe that's where the sun rises. And uh, so therefore, if you rely on Texas for to sell your work or make a living out of it that way, or um, how would I say, for recognition, it's going to be very, very difficult because uh, Texas plays it safe. You recognize this artist that has made it, have made it somewhere else, then they feel obligated to acknowledge those people. I guess if I were in New York, I would probably paint somewhat differently. I would because I'm very socially aware of what's happening. But uh, as far as uh, painting where I am, I'm not affected. I'm not restricting what I paint. As long as I know that my paintings are mine and I don't have to sell them, and I cannot sell them if I wanted to. So. Yeah. So I don't have that problem. It's like taking a cold shower, says Harry. English painter Bridget Riley. A shock at first, then it feels good. <laughs> Riley's first attempts to rise the eyeball from visual complacency in the U.S. in 1965 evoked a warning from one art critic that Riley's canvases not be hung eye level in anyone's living room unless covered with a curtain. Now back in America for her first show in seven years, the 44-year-old Riley proves that Op Art has outlasted its period of vulgarization. It's the most successful show we've had all season, says Sidney Janice, New York gallery owner. At prices up to 22,000, we've sold every painting but one. Uh, right that window. Let me put that window up a little bit. How's that? Huh? Uh, 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 wait, uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. I come all the way 
from Texas Just to shake glad hands with you I come all the way from Texas Just to shake glad hands with you Yes, but when I see it in your smiling face Didn't know just what to do Are they pumping it up with a motor over there? Hell no, it's, it's coming out of there and he's pumping it over his house from this ring. Yeah. It just flows. <laughs> Drink some of that. That is nice. Yeah. Still got that squirrely dog of yours over there? Yeah, come on out of there, dog. Is it loaded, Aubrey? Yeah, it's loaded. Go ahead and shoot it. Well, let's get uh, up here where we can do some. It. It's loaded. You want to shoot it or something? You want to throw the can out there? Yeah. Hell, it's over there. Shoot that. Hell, it's neighbor. It's killing neighbor. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Use where you hold it. Let me push that away. You better kick that empty out. Used to, you buy dynamite easier than firecracker. Yeah. Is it tight now? How about this, this string stuff? Is it any good? This you can still get it real quick and easy, but it just... How big of a hole in the ground would it be? Can we make a pretty big hole in the ground out here? Oh, yeah. This is beautiful, this wide angle. You want to put your hat back on? Well? Or should I put it in the track car? Yeah, I'll put it on here. Let me get this going. Everyone this has their favorite guns. We're going to pose after this. Yeah, you all stay still for a while, because I want to get a couple of color slides, too. OK, just assume simple pose you can hold for a few minutes. Mix ingredients well. Pack into greased half armadillo shell. Bake, bake 350 for half an hour. Remove foil and bake for another half an hour. Yeah, okay, mix ingredients. Mix ingredients. Pack. Into. Greased. Half. Greased. One half. Of an armadillo shell. Yeah, that looks good. 
mix ingredients, pack into grease, one half armadillo shell, cover with foil, bake 350, one half hour, serve six with homemade gravy. Perfect. This might look pretty good on you. Yeah, this is nice. Bailey, you roll it. Let me see. I think he's gonna look good. Might be a little bit small, but no, just right, man. Fantastic, look. Look, good, good. Here's a combination RCA. Is this a two-headed, this, right. this the five-legged uh, beast? Well, you know, is it two calves with uh, five legs or, or uh, one, one with two heads? You know, I don't know. Listen, I have been very disappointed in, uh, <laughs> I was in Amarillo, no, listen, I was in Amarillo, Texas, and being a native New Yorker, this is a year ago before. You know, I know better to go to Amarillo, Well, no, but that's a, yeah, York. I know that. You heard that, that they were that, buying art down no, there. No, that's a greasy you could do a piece, you know. <laughs> Amarillo. But before I met Bob, I was in Texas a year ago, and somebody said, come and have a classic dinner at a classic Texas ranch. And I said, hot shot, man. They're going to have the beef and the whole number. So I get out there, and I figure they're going to schlep one of these cows right into the house, bop them over the head, cut them up, and throw them in the frying pan. And when I'm in the kitchen, yeah. they're taking steaks out of packages like <laughs> AMP. New and York steaks. It, 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 it blew my whole bubble. New York meat. I really wanted, you know, that somebody to bring him in, bop them on the head, slice them up, throw them in a frying so pan. It shows you can't get what you want. You well, get see, you not them, even in Texas. You can't told me you're from Waxahachie, they would have done that, oh. but you're from New York, so they want to, like, play that thing out for you. Difficulty in breeding. Well, you have to read this first to, to believe it. The other one. Yeah. Also often called the Antle Labbit. Most amazing of all desert animals is reputed to be a cross between a jackrabbit and an antelope. Rumor has it that the jackalope sings at night in a voice that sounds almost human. <laughs> Salinas para este sábado en el Geisen Golf Ballroom. 